So, so you went away and then then you returned and um, uh, and it was just a, just a couple of months sort of uh, break. And then you came back and and it felt like the the very first conversation we had, like I I and of course as a coach I have to decide okay am I going to invest back sort of thing. It was a very different Ben on the uh, on the first call back, and um, and you came back and you had a, a shift in perspective and, and maybe that was just time, but um, I'd love you to go back to then the start of chapter two. And, and you came to me actually with a goal, which was a goal that, that was actually surprising to me. You said, I, I, I want to do a marathon. So, so go back to the start of that. Yeah. So, so I, you know, you know, I, I'm, I, I sound like I've really drunk the Kool-Aid in terms of the people I work with and, uh, you know, they, they know who they are, you know who they are, but, uh, but, but, but in conjunction with the guys, I took a little bit of time. I took a bit of time off. Actually, I took a, I took a couple of, uh, a couple of months off work. Mm-hmm. Um, to look after myself, but actually, I, I just stayed at home and was a dad. All I would, all I was, was a dad for for for, for a few months. It allowed my, my wife to kind of go back to work, and she she could actually get some separation, I think, from being at home, which which was good for her in lots of ways. She's you know, to, it was important for her to, to to also get a bit of her life back. Uh, and I just was at home. I was just at home with my little boy every day. All I did was be a dad. I went to. I'd love to call them parent and child groups. They were really mum and baby groups where, you know, as going back to my physiology, this sort of lumbering, you know, 230 pounds, six foot four dad lumbering around with uh, carrying a tiny baby through these sort of bouncy castles and ball pits and stuff. And I loved every single second of it. And and I think the most important thing, again, going back to the, the, the psychological side was it just allowed me to see that my son was well and safe and was here and was a real person and, and, you know, I, I, I could, I could, I could kind of trust that I could focus a bit more on myself again, actually coming off the back of that. And I could try and put some stuff in place, but also it gave me the sense, uh, that proximity also gave me a sense of like, I think I've got to do something a little bit differently. I don't want to go, I don't want to go back to here. I'm going to try and put some foundations in place so this doesn't happen again. Um, and as I was sort of ruminating on that, you know, kind of, you know, again, anyone, anyone who's been a parent, you'll know you plenty of time in the middle of the night to think about things just watching a child fall asleep on top of me. I remember sitting and thinking, God, that stuff Matt talks about, maybe, maybe I could do that. You know, maybe I could, maybe I could do something. Maybe I could do, and, and in my mind, I thought, maybe I could run a 10K or maybe I could, you know, do a trip with some of my friends. Maybe I could do something that, that would be um, kind of physically, physically demanding. Um, and actually really serendipitously, my, the, the, the time we were in the intensive care, there was an amazing charity, British charity, that that, that basically provides materials for parents uh, whose children are, are, are premature or, or who have um, uh, kind of birth difficulties and, and, and are staying in the intensive care. So this charity provides brilliant information to explain what's going to happen, but also like little packs of things that, that you know, like a little blanket for your baby that's safe for them, even if they're going to be in an incubator, this kind of stuff. And it meant the world to us at the time, particularly because I had, you know, none of his grandparents could come in and see him. There was nothing like that that could happen. Um, and they sent an email out saying, oh, we've got places for the London Marathon. We've got places, charity places for the London Marathon. You've got to raise a bit of money. Um, but if you want to do it, there's a place. Uh, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I could do a marathon. I could do a marathon. Um so I decided to go for it. And I thought, well, if I'm going to do a marathon, I'm definitely, definitely going to need some help. Uh, and that was that was when I picked up the phone. So I decided to, to, to not only go back and do a challenge, but do a, a proper challenge, I think. I think I think a marathon counts as a proper challenge. So I was decided to really, really give it a go and, and, and knuckle down. But I'll be clear, and we're, we're, I guess we'll talk about this. I thought I would absolutely hate it. I was just, it was full. I'm doing this to my kids. I'm doing this to my kid. I'm doing this to raise money for charity. I'm doing this because it's something that will focus me on something, but I will not enjoy this. I, I, there is no way I will enjoy doing this. Was my mindset going into it? Yeah, you're. you're uh, I'm not built for this. I am. I am the ultimate donkey dipped in cement. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> so, so let, let's go to sort of some of the granular stuff: uh, training uh, habits uh, around that side of stuff, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So. Um, from your perspective, I'd love to go back because you, you probably had in your mind, this is what it's going to take. I'm going to have to do a whole bunch of running and a whole bunch of really long running, etc. So go back and think about training and, and the sort of 
how we tackled it from your lens. Yeah, completely. And 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 I mean, it was just, it was an absolutely sort of transformational journey in that respect, right? Because I I'd worked in this industry, and particularly for you know, for anyone who's who's listening and thinking about doing an endurance sport, if you go online and Google that endurance sport and what it takes to do an Ironman or triathlon or whatever. It'll just be tons of miles of that thing over a period of six months. It's no, there's no nuance or sophistication to it. I, there are some, but the majority, not none at all. And that was one of the, for me, the best thing was that I think we started early enough from memory. So we started in the like September time, June time. Exactly. So basically kind of around, around the summer to run in the April. So I had kind of eight months of, of training time. Um, and that gave me an opportunity to, 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 to build up slowly. And you gave me a really, really interesting program at the start. So I was, I was basically focused on a combination of runs that actually made loads of sense from the sport that I'd done, from the rugby that I'd done. So there was things that were sprints, there was things that were intervals, there was hills, there was completely different volumes, there was long runs to get familiar with the longer territory, but really wasn't all about running. Loads of swimming to keep off, to keep off the joints uh, and to build up rowing, got, 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 got the erg uh, in the basement, so the house of pain downstairs, so we can do that, uh, and, on the, and on the exercise bike as well. So really try and combine all of those things. Um, gave me loads of variety, so it's the variety that I wasn't expecting. I was really expecting to get bored of running, um, which I didn't. I actually loved the runs. They were my favorite part. Um, but also just gave me a, a, a completely different way of thinking about the exercise and kept me mentally really stimulated by the different types of training that I was doing. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here as well. So it's unsurprising that I'm completely committed to the fact that if you're trying to do something that's different, you need a coach to support you in doing that. So not only were you able to give me a varied program, but I think the, particularly as a, as a, as a relatively time starved person, the ability to basically say, hey, Matt, this is my week this week. I've got a crazy week. I'm going to go. I'm flying to this city on Tuesday. Then I'll be away Wednesday. Then I'm back on Thursday evening. But I've got a thing to do with my son. Matt, great. Okay, well, I'm going to do 20 minutes this morning. Then that evening, you'll be doing some stretching in the evening. Then you're going to do a longer run that morning, working with you to work out like what hotels have different size pools. How can I exercise in different ways? Where's there going to be hills? We have loads of investments in flat countries, seemingly. So yes. you know, how, do we, how do we get some different volume? And that, that made such a huge difference because I think, you know, and again, I think it probably comes back to all, all the stuff that I talked about earlier on. Like if you, sometimes when, when things are difficult, it takes enough just to start, right? It takes, it takes a bit of willpower just to start. It takes a bit of effort to, to, to just put one foot in front of the other. And I think if I'd had the if I'd had the the easy opt out of like oh, I don't have quite the right kit or oh, I don't know what I should be doing, I probably would have taken it at some point. And I think that that combination of of, of support um, and and probably a little bit of peer pressure as well, sort of thing, was 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 a really really good thing for me. Uh, I think I think it's valuable. I mean, you you talked about uh, your. Um your mentors in the business inside, but there, there's also that there where it's, you know, th this was, this was public. This isn't something that you were hiding in the closet sort of thing. You, you were doing this and everyone kind of knew you were doing it. And there's a, there's a real positivity and there's a little bit of accountability there. I, I also remember the, the plasticity of the program where this week I'm in and, and just sort of saying, okay, I'm going to be in Amsterdam. Well, great. There's a really good park in Amsterdam. So we're going to run there. Well, Next week, I'm in Geneva. Well, we've got access to a pool, so we're going to leverage that. So also having the plasticity in the program not to try and force training into a life where it's like, hang on, I, you know, I don't have easy access to a pool in Amsterdam. Yeah, but it's the swim. It was the reverse engineer of what do we do this week based on where I'm at to keep us going in this direction. Yeah, and I, and I mean, again, I'd, I'd add, I, I think that that's, for me, that's one of the real benefits of, of, of having the coach and the structure around it. I think mm. if, if you have a very rigid program that is based off an online thing or something like that, it just feels really, really pass fail. You know, like yeah. I, I was supposed to do a, a 10 mile run this day. And if I don't do a 10 mile run, I haven't done enough. Whereas I can message like, hey, man, I'm not going to get this in. Okay, that's fine. But do this because it'll be valuable. And then we'll put that in at the weekend. It just... It just gives me loads of different ways of thinking about what I have to get done as an athlete and, and trying to find the different options in coordination with that. Now, another, another element for me as a coach was that 
I, I was trying to get you ready for a marathon. I was also looking to really stabilize your energy and enhance ultimately mental health, you know, albeit sort of indirectly. So ha had some pretty heavy in interventions, if you want to call it that, around how you're eating, yeah. um, organizing your week, some of the uh, organized. So I'd, I'd love you to talk about that sort of, uh, I'm going to frame it under habits, as it were, because uh, we, we shifted quite a little bit, a bit around on that side of stuff. Completely. I mean, I think so. So I think ha habit habit forming for me was 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 super important. It's something, it's something you really emphasised early on in the program. Was just that you've got to you've you've got to show up to this, and you don't have to necessarily, as I say, going back to it, you don't have to show up for exactly the exercise I've programmed every day. That's not what this is. But you have to commit to this being a kind of overall thing that you want to do. And again, I think that. Yeah, if I, if I look all the way back to when I was when I was training, you know, I was a teenager playing good standard sport. I, I trained six days a week, but I knew what I was going to do, and I was really committed to it. And I, I'd sit down with my mum on a Sunday evening, and be like, right, well, I've got rugby training on Monday evening, and then Tuesday morning I'm going to go in early because I want to make sure I'm doing some running, and then I'm do some stretching afterwards. And I thought about that, and and I think particularly when you've got that combination of a demanding job, you know, can my my work calendar is pretty well set, well in advance. You then layer on top of that family, you know, as as, as 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 you well know, Matt. Like toddlers, they don't they don't work to your schedule at all. So I was really trying to then look at that and think, how am I going to get the things that I need to do done in that time? And I think the, there's the sort of Sunday special type approach that we talked about, like sitting down, you know, sit down and prioritize the things that you need on a Sunday. Work out, you know, work out if you're going to do you're going to run on Monday, Tuesday, Friday. This is what that actually looks like. These are the things that you need to bring with you. This is the equipment that you need to take. This is how you're going to think about, about exercise this week. And that really, that was, for me, was the first step. And then that also then allowed me to start thinking about diet and to start thinking about sleep and then sleep being a really big one, actually. I'd say almost sleep being more important in the first phase than, yeah. than diet. Because um, mm -hmm. I think that, that really was such a pillar for me to actually exercise to, to the right level. And like for, as a family, my wife and I, we've completely changed our relationship with sleep for the better. And we've done that having a young kid as well, right? So we've been really prioritizing getting to bed early, turning lights off, not having screens in the bedroom, like all this sort of stuff that we've talked about, like that made a huge difference. And I, and I think I, I am, I am in, in everything in life, I am so convinced by the power of momentum and the virtuous circle effect, right? And so focusing on the exercise I was gonna do meant I needed to focus on the sleep I was gonna do. Focusing on those things made it logical that I would then focus on the diet and, and work there. And I mean, you know, I'm 10 kgs, 15 kgs, 20 kgs, and probably 20, nearly 20 kgs lighter than I was. So what's that, 50 pounds? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 50 pounds lighter than when we started two years ago. Basically, I, which was never a goal, by the way. That, that was a knock-on effect. We never talked about weight loss. <laughs> and, and to be frank, I've done it eating more than I did before, right? Because mm. you've, been, you've been very clear about the need to have more protein and to focus on that, which is a, as a, as a non-meat eater is harder to do. So kind of really focus on that side of things. So I, I've, I've never been in a position where I'm, where I'm eating, you know, where I'm not eating and being restrictive. But I have been much more mindful about what I'm eating and when I'm eating and then, then how I'm yeah, how I'm allocating the, the meals that I'm having to the exercise I'm doing. So making sure if I go and do a long run, I'm prepared for that. And again, it's, you know, my, my, my wife and I were laughing the other day and she's doing the same thing to be clear. So she's, she's super fit and, and really working hard on that. But like I packed to go away this week and I'm packing you know, my creatine capsules, I'm packing my magnesium for recovery and my protein shakes in the bag. But it, that's what's going to support me to do it. It takes me two minutes to do it. And yeah. otherwise, I would either not exercise or I'd exercise and then I'd be grouchy when I got to the office because I hadn't eaten properly and I hadn't had enough protein. So it, it really makes a huge difference, my ability to, to achieve those things and then to perform in different contexts, to perform in a work context and in a professional context. Yeah, I, I think one thing that yeah, I, I just want to shine a light and then we're going to talk about impact of all of this ultimately. But one thing you mentioned there that I think is really important is it's it's impossible for anyone to change everything at once. And um, and your journey, the, the reason that I think that you have been so successful, or one of the big reasons beyond your commitment, beyond your staying power, beyond saying, okay, I've gone all in, is that you did one thing, which was get going with the exercise. 
and then he laid on the sleep and and it was it opened it up in a in a sequential sort of natural sort of enmeshed way that that then a couple of years later you look back and go wow my habits have changed yeah. but it wasn't this you know it, i couldn't come in as a coach and say one two three four five all of this needs to change let's turn all the dials up at once because that is impossible for anyone to take that on particularly when you're time starved and it seemed like that was was really done well by you there yeah no and i mean but i but i also i mean i'd add that's part of you i, I remember when we first spoke you started using the phrase and i, I know i, I, I clearly i think this guy's this guy's been in california way too long because <laughs> coaching relationship right and that was that was the terminology that you used around it and and initially I was like that's just a different that's a different way of it but actually proper coaching is a relationship right it's it's understanding that if you just drop me a load of red lines I'm going to feel really boxed in and I'm probably not going to do it and I'm probably not going to commit to it in the same way but if we can layer one thing on top of the other it just allows things to improve one after the other and I think that made that that has made a that part makes almost the biggest difference because it really allows you to to, to, to to build in a much more structured way. And it also means the habits stick, right? I mean, nothing, nothing's worse than suddenly, you know, everyone, everyone who's ever tried to crash diet or try to exercise off the back of nothing, they don't stick. You can't do it. It doesn't, you, you have to build incrementally. And um, I think that's, that's doubly the case where you're pretty time starved. If you're trying to do all of this in the context of a busy work environment, like, if you don't eat enough and you don't eat in the right way after you exercise, you are grouchy in the office and your colleagues get frustrated and you aren't productive and you can't do a full day's work. And trying to combine all those things, I think, has been really important. I, I do want to make it clear I have been in California for a long time and I am very Americanized, but the Essex will never wash off me. I am okay. still a proud Essex boy with all of the stereotypes. I've got a gold chain under here, Ben. <laughs>